All right, so when we first started talking about intermolecular forces, I said that there were three types of intermolecular forces that existed between covalent molecules. The London dispersion forces was the weakest, then the dipole-dipole interactions, and now hydrogen bonding is the strongest intermolecular force that we have. Now, some students come with a misconception about hydrogen bonds because of biology. And it's something that you've heard about. It exists in the DNA structure um, in between those two complementary strands of DNA. Uh, but hydrogen bond, despite the name, it's not a bond. Hydrogen bonds are not a bond. It's a force. It's that intermolecular force that you would find between molecules. So you can see down here in this picture that the hydrogen bond is right here. It's not between the hydrogen and the oxygen in the water molecule itself. It's not between the nitrogen and the hydrogen up here in the ammonia. It's in between those two different molecules because it's an intermolecular force. Now, the reason why hydrogen bonds are a stronger intermolecular force than the dipole-dipole interactions is because of that big electronegativity difference that you would see between hydrogen and nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. That really um, big electronegativity difference creates this really strong dipole on your hydrogen and on your nitrogen, or on your hydrogen uh, oopsie, and your oxygen. So that strong dipole creates that really strong um, intermolecular force between this you know, slightly positive end of the one molecule and the slightly negative end of a different molecule, okay? Now, hydrogen bonding is only going to exist when you have the hydrogen bonded to nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine in the molecule, because that's when your big electronegativity difference is going to be created, creating those really strong dipoles to attract nearby atoms. Let's take a look. So which of these would experience hydrogen bonding? So again, we're looking for hydrogen bonded to nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. And so you can see that that's only going to exist in one of these cases. So hydrogen bonding would only exist here in letter A. Next question, of the compounds listed, which is incapable of forming hydrogen bonds? So first off, in letter A, we see that there's nitrogen and hydrogen together, so that would be creating a hydrogen bond with a nearby H2N and H2 molecule. B, there's no nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, so this cannot have hydrogen bonds. Letter C, this OH group, that's called an alcohol group. We do see those OH groups creating hydrogen bonds uh, because uh, the way that this is bent here at the end of the molecule creates this uh, easy way of attracting nearby CH3, CH3, OH molecules, creating that interaction between them. And then CH3 and H2, there we go. That's our hydrogen bonded to nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. So only letter B here would be incapable of forming hydrogen bonds. All right, so there you go. Let me know if you have any questions about hydrogen bonds.